Uh, thank you guys for joining us. This is Matt Bradley Full Course. My name is Nehemiah and I'm going to take you through from the basics to the advanced of Matt Bradley. But then uh, before you begin, please subscribe, like and share the video to your friends if you have not done so. And uh, to the returning subscribers, I really appreciate you very much for your uh, continuous support. Now, without further ado, let's begin by first understanding what is Matt Bradley. Now, uh, basically, Matplotlib is a low-level graph plot in library in Python that serves as a visualization utility. So, it is an open source and it can be used freely. Now, mostly it is written in Python, but a few segments are written in C, Objective-C, and uh, JavaScript for a platform compatibility. And I uh, guess you can find the code base here at the github.com forward slash matplotlib forward slash matplotlib then when you navigate to this section uh, you're gonna do this let me open a new tab here and then I paste and then I guess when you navigate, when you navigate to this page you're gonna find the uh, the full uh, basically the the code base here and uh, you can contribute here however I want to focus on the course on the video part so guys, okay, so basically before we begin, you should also have a Python in your system and then also you need to have a package manager to install uh, your Python packages and then uh, you need to have uh, an environment or uh, basically you need to have a notebook where you are going to write your uh, matplotlib codes. Now, first of all, let's confirm if we, if we have Python in our system. Now, to confirm if we have Python, just open your command line tool like CMD, like PowerShell, like a terminal on your Mac operating system or a Linux. On your terminal, just type in uh, Python, should be Python in small, then a hyphen hyphen, then a version. You're going to obtain the version. Uh, if this fails, just type pi, then a hyphen hyphen, then a version. It will still give you the same results now if it will not give you just know that you don't have Python in your system uh, what you might want to do go to your new tab open your browser then open another tab then uh, just type in what you just type in uh, python.org python.org then I navigate to the download page and then and then in this download page is you're gonna download for your operating system for Windows it's here you can download for Windows, Linux, you can download for Mac operating system or any other uh, system. And then uh, you're going to have it in your system. But uh, when you are installing, ensure that you click on the, all the check boxes so that you may install the required packages for Python. So just ensure that you, you click on all check boxes so that you may be sure to have everything in your system. Now, um, so once you have installed uh, Python, it usually comes with the PAP. If you have checked, uh, if you have ticked all the check boxes, it will have a PAP in your system. Now to install Py uh, now uh, this matplotlib, again navigate to your command line tool, and then uh, the PAP which it will come with the uh, Python. It is what we we use to install other Python packages like this. A matplotlib like let's say pip install pip install a matplotlib mat should be matplotlib matplotlib they are like this pip install a matplotlib so I uh, remember for me I already have it in my system that's why you can see system I required um required already satisfied the requirement already satisfied so but uh, for you you're gonna install it for uh, you know like uh, here you can see my version is i think outdated let me try to upgrade to upgrade guys you'll find the 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 code here and then i just you know paste there the terminal and then it's gonna update for us uh, for me basically but uh, for you i think if it's your first time it will just install the latest uh, version now, guys, basically once you've installed, and uh, guys, basically another alternative is to use Anaconda or a, a Spider. So basically these programs, uh, these are distribution, Python distribution usually come with the, you know, with this uh, matplotlib, so you do not have to install it. 
but uh, the best one is anaconda anaconda let me show you how you can install it anaconda is an environment where you can have all the data science machine learning and artificial intelligence you know uh, packages thousands of them you will not have to install them externally like what we did here it usually comes with all the compilers for especially for matplotlib you might want to have the compilers for visualization and, uh, and all that gui uh, compilers however just to download uh, anaconda just navigate to this page anaconda anaconda.com then uh, anaconda.com then uh, download then I download and then uh, when you hit enter it will take you to this page and uh, the headline here it is a free download you know that's the goodness of this stuff and uh, everything you need to get started in data science it is on your workstation and then uh, it's a free distribution installed you can install it free uh, it supports thousands of four of the most fundamental data science artificial intelligence and our machine learning packages and then also uh, another key thing here is that uh, you can manage packages in the environments from the desktop application you can also de deploy across hardware and software uh, platform you can see that it's quite a very powerful tool so download for your operating system mine is windows and i already have it so you're going to download it for your operating system for mac it is here for um this is Linux, I guess, Linux, and uh, any other operating system, you, you're going to install it. Now, once you've installed, uh, launch it, you, you're going to launch anaconda.navigator. Now, when you launch anaconda.navigator, it will take you to this uh, interface in this page. And then you can see we have several programs here like Dataspell, cmd.exe. Um, we have uh, Jupyter Lab Notebook. Uh, basically Jupyter Notebook, PowerShell Prompt, PyCharm, uh, Qt, Qt Console, Spider, and uh, other stuff here. However, in this course, I'm going to use Jupyter Notebook, but uh, I'm not limiting you to use your, um, you know, your preferred notebook or uh, the ID like a PyCharm. You can use anything, but if you want to follow along this course, I encourage you to launch Jupyter Notebook from this Anaconda environment. So just click on the launch, and then uh, when you launch, it will uh, it will take you to your default browser. Like it will take you to, for me, it's gonna uh, open in uh, Chrome. Chrome is my default browser. Then I think it will take you to this kind of a page where you have these folders, and then uh, you're gonna decide where you're going to place your projects, like. Uh, for me, I'm going to place here at the, at, the, at the desktop and then at the desktop, at the desktop, I uh, remember this uh, matplotlib here is a, is a file that I used here to display some content, but uh, I think for you it can, it can be empty or uh, if you have other files it will show here. So once you have this page open, then I click on the new, and then I choose Python 3. Uh, this is the latest interpreter that we are using Python 3. Then I just hit enter this on this. Uh, click on this uh, Python 3, and then uh, it's gonna open in a new tab, in a new uh, basically in a new tab. And then uh, of course I might want to close these other pages so that uh, it may not uh, confuse you. Then uh, I think by default it will, it will be untitled untitled title. So change it to your preferred title, like uh, let me say, mat uh, plot lib a uh, full course. Let me say full. It should be full uh, full course. Full course mat. I should be mat plot lib. Sorry. Mat plot lib like this, and then a full course. Let me rename. And then now, guys, I think we are set to go. Um, so we have installed Matplotlib. We have installed uh, the environment, basically the Anaconda environment, and everything is set. So how do we import Matplotlib? To import Matplotlib, you are gonna write uh, import keyword in small, and then uh, anything that you type here in uh, in Jupyter Notebook and it turns to green. Just know that it's an inbuilt uh, keyword in Python. Like uh, this uh, import in small, it is an inbuilt keyword in Python to import. 
uh, the Python modules like import mat plot lib. Uh, so basically, this is how you can import it into your notebook. And uh, for example, let's try to check the version of matplotlib we, or we are using here. So if it will bring the version just now that you have installed that uh, matplotlib or you have imported correctly. So you say we always use the print function to execute some calls at the terminal. Then let me say matplotlib then a dot then a hyphen two hyphens hyphen two hyphens then a version and then a close with the two i uh, basically i underscores not hyphens underscores and then uh, when you run if it if it gives you the version just know that you've installed uh, you know i just know that you've installed that matplotlib however um matplotlib cannot be used alone you, you might want to use other utilities and um, and uh, these are matplotlib like a pipeload a pipeload submodule of matplotlib which are usually imported under the PIT alias so for example and to do that is you just say import matplot matplotlib but I said uh most of the matplotlib utilities lay under the pipeload submodule and um you have to import it so matplotlib matplotlib itself and then a submodule which is a pipeload and uh, it is mostly used with these alias remember i told you alias is like um and the other name for something is like a, the nickname the nickname of something like a, the alias the the short version of something like matplotlib dot uh, a default one is plt but we can use another alias name but uh, let's go with the default one which is available at matplotlib documentation so basically this is how you can import it and uh, let's try to uh, let's try to do at least try to visualize something and of course uh, you can use other modules as well like numpy uh, numpy gets to install it just type in to your cmd let me get it there um to your terminal just type in a p p i p install install numpy and then it's going to, it's going to install numpy for you because uh I want us to use numpy here also you can see for me i already have it so but uh if you're using an account i think it usually come with those packages now here let me say import import numpy is a pd uh, is a npls pd is for pandas uh, npls and then uh, here <coughs> let's create some values for x and y axis like for x let me say x points x points and then let me assign it to a numpy array np dot np dot array and then uh, let me pass in uh, let me pass in some points or some coordinates like a zero and then uh, perhaps six this is the first coordinate therefore basically for this this is for x points uh, x points we have to two values here and then uh, for y points uh, points let me assign it to uh, the numpy array itself np dot array and then i'm gonna pass in this list here of values zero and then uh, uh and then perhaps even to 50 or something like that let me say to 50. so the first co coordinate is zero zero the second one is six uh to 15. So it will be kind of a straight line uh, pointing from the zero, uh, from the origin actually. And so uh, to visualize, we are going to use matplotlib here, which we, sh we use the alias for matplotlib, which is plt. Uh, plt dot plot. We use the plot function to plot our points. Uh, it is x points. And then uh, we are passing also the y points y points and then uh, to visualize 
uh, to visualize we're using matplotlib.pyplot their last name and then uh, show function uh, to visualize and then uh, when you run uh, <coughs> when you run then i guess you'll have this uh these are uh, stuff here i guess uh, if it will not visualize just so that you don't have the compilers and then you might want to install um those compilers like a tk inter for matplotlib compiler gui compiler uh so it's okay, so basically ensure that you have uh, uh, the required stuff for it to work but uh, if you followed every step that they showed you it, it must you know visualize so basically this is how you can do it this is how you can you know uh, visualize our stuffs in matplotlib now let me talk about plotting in matplotlib and uh, basically this i begin with the plotting the x and y axis basically x and y points so basically the plot function is used to draw points or a markers in a diagram so uh, by default the plot functions draw a line from point to point and the function takes parameters for specifying the points in the diagram like what we did here you can see um, we defined x points and uh, y points here and so um, those are the parameters that you can use to specify points in the diagram and our uh, parameter one uh, by default it should it should be it should be the the x axis and then uh, this second parameter should be the y axis you can give it any name variable name here but ensure that the variable that you use to define your x points in the y points it must be you must use the exact name here and then um so uh for example let me let me try another another scenario another example here like let me change some values let me perhaps say one eight and then uh, to this other one let me say something like uh three and three you can see this one it it it, it, it ran from the origin zero zero all the way through uh you know six to fifty however let's try to change the origin to be to be one eight basically one to eight something like here and then um the three three and what three and ten not really uh, three and ten sorry three ten so basically this one is the coordinates is it is x and y so it is one three one then a three thing is somewhere here and then um eight ten it will be uh it will be somewhere there the eight and then a ten let me try to run and see if it will bring something there and then again so basically you can see 810 1 3 8, 10. so basically that's how you can that's how you can you know uh, visualize so basically the x-axis is the horizontal this line this is the x-axis and then at the y-axis it, it is this uh, vertical axis now uh let's uh to plot uh, basically is that to plot only markers you can use the shortcuts um, the shortcut string notation parameter o which means uh string uh, basically which means uh, the ring the ring not string ring so you can as well use that for example you can add in another argument here like if one just if you don't want the the lines you want just the points you can add in these uh uh, basically object string notation the, the basically the string notation here parameter which is o not zero o or it should be o like this then it will bring what only the points you know you can see we have at these two points zero uh, basically here at one three and our uh, and that eight ten so basically that's how you can do that and uh, you can as well give uh, add multiple points like uh, let's try to say um, let me say perhaps two uh, two six eight you can choose your random values um let me say three three eight uh one ten any value and then um let me, let me guess uh, let me first of all let, let me first of all do without the the the, the points let me run and see how it appears with the uh, with the with the lines and then i guess you can see how it appears with the lines and then um 
let's try without the lines without the lines it will be what uh, basically the points it will be like this so guys basically you find the concept here to draw without the lines you just add that um or for to define the the rings uh, basically when you use that or uh, basically when you use the you know that uh or it, it will mean uh basically a ring so it's a it's a, it's a, it's a shortcut string notation uh parameter for the rings so it's the, that's the the same as the ring now um the other thing uh default x points so guys okay, so basically if you do not specify the x points on the x axis they'll get defaulted to one two three four that format you know so if you don't perhaps if we just have the y axis like this let me delete the x axis so guys okay, so assuming that you just have only the x axis then you pass in here um the y points but it will be defaulted to one two three so let me run and see and then i guess you can see it is now defaulted to one two three so um basically zero one two three zero one uh two three and so there is a basically if you don't specify it will be defaulted to zero one two three remember indexing begins from zero one two three and so forth so one is like zero is like one one is like two and so forth perhaps let me talk about the markers markers in details so guys you can use the keyword argument marker to emphasize each point with a specified marker like for example if you want to add a marker for example like something like at the rings or something like rounded stars here uh, to define our points oh, you can uh, you can as well use the marker something let me show you that so in that case first of all you separate a parameter with a comma and then i say marker <coughs> marker and then you, you assign it to your preferred marker like let's begin it with the or for string so when you visualize it will have some or some rounded stuffs here you can see I think you can see it has some rounded stops here at the at the you know intersections. So um, you can as well use another like a for you can as well use asterisk you know star asterisk. And then when you run, it will have asterisk. As you can see, I don't know if you can see, it has some asterisk here at the top. And then, uh, of course, you can have several. You can have, you can have even, even capital X, uh, capital X, the cross, and then you can see is you have those steps. You can also have plus, a plus, and then you can see we have those a plus. Now uh, you can have even the you know the. Uh, the square something so guys basically there are many you can find the reference on the website we have many other stuff like even for a H line or a horizontal line just passing your underscore and then uh, it will uh, give you that uh, I don't know if you can see but uh, for, um, for me it is you know underlined like this or as well you can have the uh, you know the vertical line uh, vertical line which is a pipe on your keyboard this vertical line just um, on your keyboard it's just a straight line here this one you can as well have it and then uh, guys you can see it's available there so uh, we have many other stuff but uh, let me talk about uh, how we can format our strings you know so guys uh, we can also use the shortcut string notation parameter to specify the marker like uh, this parameter um, uh, basically for shortcut string uh, you know a uh, uh, shortcut string notation the shortcut here should be uh, fmt and so this one stand for um, marker line and the color you can specify everything so like let me show you this example guys for example if you want to specify the color and everything for the actually for our line 
So, uh, guys, uh, basically, the first item here it will define what you are, you know, you are. Um, uh, your marker, the first one, like if it's all, it will be rounded or something like uh, the ring. And then uh, the second parameter, it will define what? Uh, basically, this second parameter, it defines if it's dotted or uh, uh, you, uh, you, 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 the, the kind of line that you want. This colon, it will define that it will be, it will be dotted. Then at uh, the second, the third parameter, it will be color. So in short, uh, these three parameters, the first one stands for marker, the second one stands for line, then uh, the third one stands for uh, basically for color. So uh, when you run, it will be red color dotted and uh, rounded. It has rounded stops, you know, at the, you know, at the, at the joints. But I uh, guess basically in that case, you don't have to specify the marker here because uh, this one is a shortcut string notation. Let me run again and see. Uh, so guys, uh, basically, you can see it is uh, output. It has output. This uh, starts here, and of course, for solid for solid line, um, you just use the hyphen like this. It will be a solid line. <laughs> you can see it's a solid line for dashed. Uh, you can use uh, you can use a uh, hyphen two hyphens, and then uh, when you run, it will be dashed. And then um, you can also have dashed in the what? Dashed in the dotted. Mm, dashed in dotted. Then uh, to give you this kind of a result. So guys, you can play around in those stuff. And of course, colors also you can change from R. You can change even to green. G. Uh, it will be green. I found to find a blue. You can use even a uh, B. For blue, and then um, uh, for example, white, white it will not be visible, but it is W. But uh, for black, we use K, not B. It will be black, and then uh, for cyan, we use C. Uh, it will be cyan, and then uh, for mangeta, we use a small M. It will be mangeta, and then uh. The size also, guys, you can specify the size of the marker. Like, um, let's try this. Let me say, um, let me add in this parameter. Let me say marker. Marker, and then uh, let me assign it to, let me assign it to O. Uh, let me assign it to O, it should be a string. Then uh, the second, the other parameter is the size. We use a MS. To define the size, actually we use the MS to, to set the size of the marker. Uh, this stands for marker size, and then you can specify. For example, if it's 20 uh, points, and then I can see this it's now big. If it's 10, let's say 10, you can see it's somewhat small. So, guys, you can play around with those markers, and uh, of course, you can add in other parameters even for colors. Um, you can say, for example, for marker colors, you can just say um, uh, M E C. Actually, use um, this keyword. Uh, M E C stands for uh, marker markage colors, markage colors, and of course, this one will be the edges here, like at uh, uh, the at uh, the outer 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 part of these uh, you know these uh, uh, markers. It will be and the colors that you defined. Like uh, for example, if it's you want it to be red, you can just say R, then it will be red. I don't know if you can see, but uh, for me it is red. White is uh, white is W. I uh, can't see because it cannot uh, blend with the you know with the background which is white. And of course, basically this this one affects only the the edges of the marker. But I uh, can also uh, affect the face now, the face itself. So for, for face, you just say uh, marker, uh, marker, what, marker face color. So this one will affect the entire what, basically the face of these uh, markers. Like if you specify, 
are red it will be red this rounded stuff will be red so you can see it's now red and then uh, you can play around with those stuff however um you can as well use both you can as well use uh, both like what i did here both mark edge calendar mark face um basically marker face her colors so it will give you the the, the results you know of course guys you can as well use the uh you know the hexadecimal values you can use the names to define your colors like uh, you can say for black here instead of just typing um red you can just type in even the color red it will be red but uh, this one is not a good practice let me try to use um a different one so that we understand like let me say black you can just use black then it will be, it will be black and then you can as well use the hexadecimal values like uh, let's say for for red for red it is um for red it is hash let's get to define this one is a high uh, hexadecimal value now for red uh, for red it is um uh, f00 not this one is not a hexadecimal this is the shortest version however you can use the uh, uh, let's say with a blue or a green uh, let's say um zero zero and uh, then a uh, zero zero then uh, ff this one will be blue this is the hexadecimal value and then i guess you can see it's now blue and of course here also you can change here to any other color guys however you can even say um, um you know let's say black all right let me say red the outer glow outer part it will be red so when you run it will be kind of red i don't know if you can see but on me for me i can see it's red so guys you can play around with those stars and um you know uh you'll see the the results you know now let me talk about something important here or something is let me talk about these lines in details so um the line style you know the line style property so um so basically guys you can as well you know um play around the line style like let me just try to add in another parameter here at the end so guys basically you can also uh, play around the line style with the line style property with the line style property line style line style and then you can specify the line that you want if it's dotted you can use even the name like if it's dotted it will be a dotted a line um oh sorry guys you separate a parameter with a comma like this and then when you run uh guys you can see our line is now dotted let me just um yeah it's dotted and then uh, what else perhaps gives a good practice uh basically the shortest way to use this property you just define l l s for line style l s and then uh, let me use uh, perhaps dashed dashed then uh i guess you can see it's now dashed with the l l s uh, uh property basically the shorter version and then uh, i guess you can see it is um you know kind of uh, nice and then uh, i guess uh, basically you can as well use these uh instead of dashed you can just say what you can just for dotted just specify a column just type in a column in between these uh string notation these string quotes and then it will be uh dotted for dashed just use what just use uh, two events um two events then it will be it will be uh dashed and then now uh, for i think this is the most common ones and um of course you can use even the um you can use what you can use a dash dotted you can use even dash then a dot it will be a dash dotted you know line and so forth now for colors for colors guys you just specify the car the, the the line color just specify this color property like color then you specify the color that you want like if it's red you want the color to be red it will be red like this and then now uh, so hey i always forget to add in a comma remember guys you have to spare to separate a parameter with a comma like this and then uh, uh you can see now the color is red of course you can use the color names itself like uh for black you can just say black black 
it will be black or i can use the hexadecimal values or even the the rgb basically values or uh, for let me just say uh, let me just uh, run let me just use a uh, hot pink did i use the name just name the hot pink like this so the color will be hot hot pink or uh, you can use the hexadecimal value like uh, for um, yellow yellow it is um it is a f f f f and then a zero zero it will be yellow but it won't be visible i think uh, i think it's you can't see it well but a bit basically that's how you can do that however let me talk about the width of the line if i want to specify the width let me use a um let me use that let me use um let me use red color so that you may see better let me run now i want to specify this um uh, line with property so guys are basically for line line with property perhaps let me try to reduce something here like um hmm. let me reduce other properties so that i may it may not be a long a long line here then i guess basically you can use the line with property because i remember to separate a parameter the command then let me say line with line with then you can assign it to your line with a value like you remember it must be inside the quotes then you say for example if it's 20 it will be 20 pixel 20 pixels you can see it's very very big for 10 you can just say 10 then it will be a 10 pixel width of course guys you can use the shortcut which is l l what l l l l l w line width then now if you specify five for example for instance let's say five and then now uh, you can see it is kind of uh, five pixel width so um so guys okay, so basically remember you can as well upload many lines you want for example um first of all guys let me remove this parameter i think um having a big line is not not it's not professional let's have so guys i basically gonna have several lines like uh, let me just add in another line here uh not really should be. let me just copy and then i do it let me pass it here and then uh, here i'm gonna say for example y let me here call it y1 this one to be y2 y1 remember if you don't specify the x axis it will be defaulted to one zero one two three so here let me guess another random values like uh seven two three four one uh, hmm. does it make sense like uh, let me just say even nine uh nine nine or uh, let me just or a uh, five also or uh, let me just say uh three any other random values and then again so basically let me remove this and this stuff so that you can understand so here guys i'm gonna pass in y1 y1 and then also i'm gonna pass in now you, you have to use the same function plt dot plt dot plot and then you can pass in y2 so it will be two lines you know two lines uh, so as you can see it is now uh, two lines with different colors here so um basically as you can use the same properties that we used to define the to change the colors and all that for each for individual like if you want to specify the colors for eye here you can just do that by changing the color property adding like a, let's say color color and then i remember always to separate a parameter with a comma uh, so you can say for example if it's red and just say red then your color will be red and so forth but uh, i think i've talked about these stuff in details however guys you can just uh, play around with those uh, stuff so that you may master everything there now let me talk about the very very important part here in a um, in a graphical presentation of course it is the labels and the uh, the the title so guys it's a good uh, practice for example if you have um, 
uh, if you have labeled your x-axis in the, the y-axis. So let me show you that. Now, guys, are basically to um, to label. So from them, guys, let me try to change the code or uh, let me just use, let me copy. Then let me use a new cell here so that I think you may understand, you may relate. So here, let me call it um let me call it this one to be the x and let me call it to be the uh, let me just let me just use the x-axis uh, like this uh which the x-axis without the y-axis and then um so um so for y label so basically to to define the x label and y label you use the plt first of all the function the plt module and then now uh, you for x, x label you just say x label i think this is spelling for label label and then uh, label right then uh, you pass in and say the these are parentheses you pass in your your values like uh, for example uh, let me say for example um let me use the calorie. I like using a calorie, you know, workout. They work out to burn the calories in the body. So, first of all, let me see uh, average pulse. Our average uh, pulse or a heartbeat, I think. Then, uh, also for y axis, for y axis, let me say plt dot uh, y label. Then I'm gonna pass in what? Uh, let me pass in something like a calorie, calorie bandage, calorie bandage. Then uh, when you run, uh, so basically it will be red. So first of all, guys, I forgot here. I should have done what I should have uh, removed this. Uh, let me change here to to another value. Let me just call it x points let me just call it uh, points and uh, let me also change it to where 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 it should be here let me just change it to points uh, points like this and then uh, let me run and then let me zoom out a bit so for you to see so as you can see here it is color bandage in the y-axis and then on uh, the x-axis it is the average part so basically that's how you can create the the the, the, the label or they are basically the uh, x label in, in that the y label and of course you can also add in your title title perhaps let's try to say um hmm, let me zoom in that first of all so for title title should be the first item here let me just of course the placement doesn't matter but as a good practice to be orderly like let me say plt dot a title title and then uh, here i'm gonna pass in i'm gonna take for example let me for calorie burning and uh, this stuff can be related to some kind of sports activity or something so let me just say for example sports sports uh perhaps watch data data or anything then uh, You'll find out that uh, here at the top you have now that title and so guys okay, so basically that's how you can you know that's how you can uh, uh, do that and of course guys you can um uh, you can um you can change the font family and whatever like for example um let me show you guys at that for colors, for colors, for labeling, for uh, changing the colors and the uh, properties for and these lines, I think you you understand, of course, to add the points, the markers, and uh, all that to change the line style. You understand. Let me show you how you can change the 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 font type and the font family, font size and whatever. Um. So, uh, basically, for example, for title, you can do it. You can change say family. Uh, basically, you can um. You can do it. You can pass in your, um, you know, um, you can pass in what you can pass in, uh, you know, uh, your parameters here. Like, uh, let's say, uh, <coughs> we are gonna add in the dictionaries, the dictionaries here. Like, 
let's say um let me say if i should be inside the coach first of all let's separate our parameter with a comma and of course guys you can do this you can as well the good practice you can i uh, use the variables here so that you can just you know pass um uh, yeah guys basically you can do that so let, let me show you that you can just use the variables like uh, let's say font font one basically font one then uh, let me assign it to this dictionary dictionary family first of all should be inside the quotes so family family uh, family you can uh, use serif let's use uh, what serif not really it should be first of all key value pair is separated with a column and then now uh, because both are strings should be in, it should be enclosed into the quotes so let me say serif serif and this is the first argument and then at the second parameter let me say color the key should be inside the quotes and then uh, let me say color and then I'll separate key value pair with a colon. And then I here, uh, let me say the color to be what? Let me call it, um, let me use blue, right? Let me say blue. Let me say blue, right? Blue. Now, once you have done that, then uh, here the title, you can see what, um, you use this property font date, font dictionary font. Uh, found, uh, you know, you use uh, the font dict, you know, property font uh, dict font dict property. Ensure first of all you have separated with a with a comma, and then you assign it to uh, that font what font one it should be font one, right? Font one. Now when you run it, it should affect our title, and then you can see our title is now. A change of course you can play around with the other steps you can play around with this uh, x label and y label but uh, uh, for the interest of time let me go to something else here very very important uh, let me talk about um, uh, adding grid lines you know let me talk about how you can add the grid lines on your plot so that it can be kind of you know a presentable so um so there's a basically to add the grid lines you just say plt dot grid. Uh, basically, we use um, uh, we use we use the grid function to add the grid lines. Just say, uh, you know, just say uh, plt plt dot you know uh, grid. First of all, let me try to plt then I dot grid grid function. And then in this way, it will add the grid lines uh, on our on our plots, on our graph. You can see now we have the grid lines, you know, kind of presentable gaze, very very nice. So you can also specify uh, which grid lines to basically which grid lines to display. Like if you want to display only the green grids on the x-axis or a grids on the y-axis, you can as well do that. For example. Here you just say, for example, if you want to specify the x-axis, you want to have only the line for the x-axis, you just say what uh, axis, axis, then you assign it to your, um, uh, basically to your art, to your, um, um, basically you just specify what, you just specify the, you know, uh, the, 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 let me just say font one, right? Let me just say font. A font one like this. Let me run and see if it will work. Um, so, um, oh, it's not a value, value of for x and y. Uh -huh. So let me just try to say uh, x, right? Let me just say x. I should have defined let me just say x and see if it will work yeah guys you can see that so for x it will run from uh, from uh, it will be vertical let me zoom out it will be vertical then for y it will run you know this way it will, it will begin from the y axis to the left so we just specify the y and then it will run horizontally 
in the background scene so basically you can specify the the you know the uh, the grid lens mm, the way you want it so uh also you can do it you can uh, add other properties for your grid lens like uh, colors you can also add the colors but i don't want to um to go into details in this however let me just show you for colors for colors you can just say for example if it's red and then uh, when you run our grid lens will be red let me uh I should be color, not colors. So it should be, uh, you know, I should be color, colors here, color here, not colors. And then now uh, it is, it is now red. Let me try to use the blue, blue. And then uh, remember, guys, you can as well play around with the sizing with the with the, with the type of lines and whatever. However, I guess I don't want to, because I already taught you on the, on the lens, lens tail and all that. The same applies in, with these uh, grid lens. So, don't want to uh, waste my time on that. So, um, guys, so basically you can also display multiple uh, plots. So, guys, so basically the subplot function, you can draw multiple plots in one figure. So, like, um, so like guys, let me do this. Let me uh, let me just use a different uh, cell and I try to begin a fresh order that you can understand. First of all, guys, you import the module which is uh, which is a uh, matplotlib lib dot pyplot matplotlib dot pyplot is a plt alias plt. And then uh, import also we are importing uh, numpy as what is a np alias and then now uh, what is let's have plot one let me use a comment because i taught you these are comments in python let me just call, call it plot one remember comments will not be executed at the time now it just help us to, to, to understand that uh, this seg segment was for plot one so let me say x axis let me assign it to some numpy array and then in this numpy array i'm gonna pass in a list for example from zero should be zero one two three perhaps to yeah let it be two three and then for y in the plot one let me assign it to um let me assign it to perhaps let me say um should be first of all numpy dot array because i'm using the same array and then uh, here i'm gonna pass in this uh, list above some um, you know three uh, eight one perhaps ten also you see it took um, hmm. so this is the plot one and then uh, here we're gonna do this we are to visualize just say plt plt dot uh, plt dot what uh, plt dot um subplot sub subplot and then I hear you're gonna pass in you're you're gonna specify this parameter one perhaps one two then a one I'll, I'll explain in a few. However, also you can do this plt dot plot now this to plot plt dot plot and then to you can plot your x and uh, x and y. So guys, okay, I want to duplicate this stuff. Let me copy. And then uh, let me do it. Let me duplicate. Let me paste it here. And then I here guys, I want to change the coordinates. Perhaps let me use 10, 20, uh, 30, uh, 40, 40. And then now uh, let me do it. Let me just try to. A visualize so let me try to visualize i think uh, i think uh, the codes are okay now let me try to now here we don't we use the subplot so here we use a uh, show function now plt.show plt.show function to visualize because we already have them um oh, of course of course we, we need to have the plot function we need to have the plot function 
and then uh, here now we have the visualizing the visualizing function that show let's try to run and see if it will work out and then i guess you can see now we have uh, but now uh -huh, uh -huh. so guys basically i should have changed here you know uh, here you can see i used i used what i used um two basically one then a one so if i wanted to have it in a different uh, graph or a different uh graph i should have done what i should have changed here to i should have changed here to two so that we may have separate what plots graphs so when you run then i guess you can see we have separate uh, we have what we have se separate yeah you know our graphs and of course you can have as many as you want uh, so guys uh, let me explain these uh let me explain these uh, lines here let me explain these uh, uh these stuff so first of all let me tell me at uh, this upload let me try to explain these uh stuff here or uh, these are uh, uh, coordinates here so this means this means that um uh the figure should have what should have one row this one the figure should uh, should have one row and then uh, two columns two columns two columns you can see this column one column two and then at uh, the third parameter here this one specify what uh this specify the if it's uh, the second plot if it is uh, the first plot and so forth so um you can have several guys if you have several you have to change the parameter here if you want to have separate values you have to do it you have to change the parameters here like if it's three you are going to change here to three so that you may have three uh, items there and then uh, you know and then uh, guys are uh, basically of course guys you can also change the orientation you can change the orientation to uh, perhaps landscape or whatever uh, using the um using this um so uh so guys i say that uh, the, the the first item defines that is a is a row one is a row and then uh, if you want a column if you want a column you have to use that two and of course guys you can also add the titles so you remember how we did that how to add the the titles and what uh, what have you um let me show you for, for just an example here so let me just say for example title here let me just say um plt plt dot title of course guys you can add the y label and the x labels but uh, let me just show you the title and then uh, you are going to try the other ones for yourself so for example for title i can say for example this one is for sales and then uh, when you run let me just copy and then uh, add in those two uploads now when you run you can see we have now the titles of course you can add the x label and the y label but uh, uh that is your assignment let me go to something else um so uh so guys uh, let me talk about this cutter uh this cutter plots so guys uh, basically with the pipe plot you can use also this cutter function to draw this cutter plot and uh, the scatter function plus one dot for each observation and it needs to it needs basically this one needs to array of the same length you know the same length one for the uh, values of the x-axis and the one for the values of the you know y-axis so um let me let me just um first of all these two lengths of code they are our common denominator here they are uh the values and changeable values so let me try to zoom in a bit and then uh, here let me just try to plot my coordinates here like uh, for x let me assign it to the numpy array np dot np dot np dot array and then uh, in this array list i'm gonna add in some values uh, remember it should be of the same length if it's x and y and so for example let me say uh five six seven um eight two and then uh, perhaps uh, 12 whichever random values but i uh, remember it must be equal one two three four five six there are six so for y it should also be six so let me say y then uh, let me assign to np dot array and then uh, in this array list i'm gonna pass in the equal number of values like in this other ones like uh, let me here say uh, for example um three four two and then uh, seven 
10 so this is 1 2 3 uh, here should be perhaps let me just say a uh, 5 let me use 5 here 1 2 3 4 5 6 there are 6 6 here so uh, to plot a scatter uh, you say plt plt dot scatter and then uh, here you are going to pass in your coordinates x and y x and y and then uh, to visualize we use function plt a show function plt dot show function and then when you run uh guys basically you'll have your scatter remember the values of the x should be equal with the values of y if you add an x directly to bring an error like uh, let's say 11 this one will uh, bring an error you can see um x and y must be of the same size so uh, if you add in uh, another so sorry should be here if you add in another value here like a two uh, it, will, it, will, it will remove the error uh, so guys basically this uh, about this cutter of course you can add in the color properties of course i showed you that so you can just say for example you can add in the color property if you want to change the color and the, the size just say color you specify to your preferred color if it's red just say r and of course it will be red and of course you can play around with the sizing and all that but uh I guess uh, let me talk to something but uh, let me go talk about the color map so basically guys a uh, matplot model has a number of available color maps and um it, it is a color map is, is, is like a list of colors where each color has a value that ranges from zero to 100 so um the thing is i should i should show you that i should show you uh, this so um for color maps so so now um so for color map you just uh, let me zoom in a bit for you to see better so for color map guys uh, here you just say c map should be seeing a map c map a c map of course you can you can uh, give it your um, your color uh, the c map here for example if you specify the radius the radius it will, it will give you the the colors i should have done it i should have created a variable for color so that i can pass it here also um remember the colors should be let me just show you that for for you to understand better let me just add in the another property here for colors so our uh, colors let me just say colors let me create a variable for colors then uh, let me assign it to np dot array and then in this array i'm gonna pass in and the colors remember how color should be should be the same also so for example i see that it should be in a range of 0 to 0 to 100 so like 0 10 and then uh, it should be 20 30 40 50 60 70 so 10 20 that 40 50 67 the thing there are seven items one two three four five six seven eight. remember if it surpasses it won't work then i uh, here uh to specify a uh, certain car basically to specify this color range so basically each each item will, will have a different color like uh, you use the c to define the color in the same map and then i uh, here you just specify what you just specify the colors the variable which colors and then um let's run uh, first of all separate with a comma parameter with a comma then let's run and then um uh, let's give it some time so that uh so it brings an error right let's check it out and see what c argument has eight elements which is inconsistent oh guys basically uh, i think i think i guess that we the numbers are passed here i said it should be equal it should be equal let's try to run again and see if it will work out yeah guys you can see uh, each color now has uh, each plot each each marker has an item each scatter has an item here so um basically that's how you can do it that's how you can uh, play around with that and of course you can uh, you can also play you can also add the color bar here color bar so that you can relate uh so to add the color bar just say plt plt 
dot color color bar like this and then uh, uh, it will add what the color bar so as you can see uh, 70 it is yellow uh, Sigis is, is green and then uh, 50 is kind of these values and so forth so you can also use the color bar for your visualization and um, uh, you can um, of course guys you can find the reference on the website just navigate to the to this section for matplotlib and uh, you can you can uh, play around with those stuff and of course you can say add in the size parameters also um so uh so you can uh, let me add in uh, though i don't want let me just uh, press it here and then uh, here i'm going to change it to size Let me change it to size and then um, I don't know what. Uh, let me just add in these uh, values here. So I'll say s or size size uh, variable, and then uh, when you run, you'll have different uh, sizes. Of course, I always forget to add in the para the, the the comma to separate parameters, and then. Uh, you can see now it, uh, it is now it has different you know sizes of course you can uh, you can do uh, you can uh, give higher values so that you can have you know big values and so forth but uh, let me talk about uh, another item here of course you can uh, change the opacities of each item and so forth however let me talk about the bus the matplotlib bus uh, we've talked about this cutter let me talk about the bus now remember the same principle apply now it must have the equal number in the x and y axis however let me just use a uh, let me just use a, a different cell here so that you may understand of course these two lengths are are a must for you to use matplotlib uh, and also the number arrays and so for x is gonna be remember x is this lens here so uh, in this lens i want to use some unique some names like a, a b c d or uh, some names of people in the or a month let me use months so it will be n n p dot array and then i uh, here uh, i'll pass in for example january january and then uh, let me say uh, february february and then uh, here let me say uh, march March and then uh, perhaps let me uh, use the pro and so forth. So this is the first array for x. And then uh, for y, I'll say uh, y. Then uh, let me assign it to this np dot array. And then uh, let me give it some values like uh, let me say three, uh, five, one, uh, six. They are five times right then um to, to plot a bar you can say for example a plt dot dot bar and then I specify the coordinates they are basically the x and y x and y and then to visualize we say plt dot show function and then uh, when you run you will obtain this a graph let me zoom out a bit i think it's kind of big and then i guess you can see at the x-axis we have january february march april and so forth and then uh, these are the values here you can see on january it was three february it was five march it was one april it was it was six so um um so basically this is how you can do it this is how you can apply you know you know you can use the bar function to to draw your bar graph and uh, guys, uh, basically, um, uh, the bar function takes segments that uh, describe the layout of the bars, like uh, the cat categories and uh, their values represent. They are basically re they are represented by the first and that the second argument. So, like x is the first argument to display the x-axis, and then uh, uh, the other one is for y, you know, y-axis. Of course, you can change the orientation if you want to have uh, the horizontal bus that runs from this other side. Just say bar H for horizontal, and then uh, it will have what it will have uh, those values. Let me just 
show you see and then I guess you can see it now uh, horizontal bars uh, for vertical just specify bar and then it will be vertical and of course guys you can change the colors of course you can say let me zoom in uh, a bit then uh, for colors I remember always to to separate with the colon separate parameters with the colon uh, based with a comma sorry then uh, of course you can give it red then uh, the bar will be red and so forth you can uh, add other arguments and uh, of course you can as well use the you can as well use uh, the you know uh, the width the color width uh, basically not <laughs> not the color with the size the width of the bars like if it's less let me show you that let me say width I can assign it to perhaps an, uh, an integer like as one. Or let me just say 1.0. Um, oh, guys, basically for bar, uh, remember this bar, it is um, it is horizontal. So this one won't be the, uh, uh, remember this width, for horizontal it would be remember the lines for horizontal lines from this other side to this other side so it won't be the width so i think in that case it should be it should be height right it should be height instead of width because uh, it is from bottom to left uh, basically it's from top to oh, to to from bottom to top right so let me say height and then um so you can see now it is very big and then uh, guess if it were bar uh, bar just horizontal then uh, this property won't work uh, and that in that case guess you have to use the width because it's now horizontal width for it to work and um you can change even this use a 0 0.2 it will be kind of small and then i guess you can see it's now small and of course you can play around with those uh, properties however let me talk about um let me talk about the histogram now guys basically we've talked about the scatter the bar um, then uh, let me talk about the histogram now basically i saw uh, histogram is a graph showing frequency distribution and uh uh, it is a graph showing the number of observation within within each given interval intervals like uh, guys basically let's say uh, let's say you 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 ask for the height of uh, perhaps let's say 100 people you might end up with a histogram that looks like let me just show you that let me just uh, show you how you can create a histogram um and so uh first of all let me talk about how you can create this as histogram so in matplotlib we use the ist function to create histograms and at the histogram function we use an array uh, an array of numbers to create the histogram and uh, the array sent into the function is an argument and uh, for basically for simplicity we use the numpy to i'll use a uh, numpy to randomly generate an array for example of 200 and 200 and uh 200 perhaps 250 values where the values will concentrate around around um let me sh let me talk when i show you for you to understand so first of all let's use uh numpy import first of all let me say import numpy is npls and then uh here let me use uh number numpy to generate some random values and now uh, random 100 250 values here like uh, let's say np dot a random a random dot normal distribution to be normal and normal then uh, in this uh, distribution is gonna be uh, to, i want it to concentrate around 170 so the concentration will to be at the one, 170 and then now uh, it's gonna be have a standard deviation of perhaps let's say 10 and then uh, the values will be uh, the values will be 250 250 and so uh, let me try to print out first of all before we visualize let's say print uh, x and then uh, let's try to run let me run and then i guess we can see we have these values here uh, these values uh, we have it here and then i guess you can see the, the uh yeah so guys basically these are the values and then um 
now to visualize uh, to visualize this uh, you have to use matplotlib let me just copy this first line of code here and then now what i do let me um you know paste it here and uh, let me paste it there and then um uh we use the what we use the east function plt dot hist and then we pass in what x we pass in x and then to visualize we use what which function plt plt dot show plt dot show function then uh, when you run it will be a, a histogram and then uh, just like i said the concentration will be around 170 because uh, we did what we specified 170 that's why you can see the concentration is here at 170 and then um the values and they are um basically the range is between uh should shouldn't in past 250 that's why you can see you have this and these values here and so uh, basically that's how you can work with the histograms uh, so let me talk about the pie charts the pie charts they are very very fundamental part of uh matplotlib of, of course visualization they are very very important aspects to visualize your stuff so with pie plot you can uh, you, you can use the pie function to to draw the pie like let me uh let me just copy then I'll let me paste it here and then I'll let me try to zoom in a bit. And then now, guys, in that case, in that case, guys, you have to specify your values. Like here, let me just use uh, a list. A list, and then uh, here in this list, I can say, for example, let me use that 5, 25, 25, and then uh, 15. Of course, it shouldn't be a full stop, it should be a comma, right? And then now here we use the pi instead of list. We use pi. We use pi. And then in this case it will draw it. It will draw the pi. It will draw the you know the pi. You know. So this as you can see here, um, the pi chart uh, draws one piece uh, called a wedge. Uh, this uh, this piece is what we call a wedge. And then for basically for each value in the array, it is in this case it was that 5, 25, 25. So by default, the plotting of the first wedge starts from the x axis and then it moves uh, kind of, uh, clockwise, you know. So this is the that 5 and that 5. So it moves in this way. This is the axis, the, the x axis, then it moves kind of clockwise in yeah, that way. So this will be the start then uh, it goes counter clockwise so basically the size of each wedge is determined by the comparing the value with the uh, all the values uh, using the formula and so it will be the the value divided by the sum of all the values like if it's that five it will be that five plus the summation of all these values here it will be the summation of uh, these values these values here so if i want to find the for that five it will be that five over of um the sum uh, the sum of all the values here and then you're gonna obtain your your, uh, your your graph of course you can add in the labels you can add in the labels and then uh for example uh here i can say um so uh, for labels uh, I can specify labels like let me add in the labels property. Let me say labels, then uh, let me assign it to the four items, right? So for labels, I can say a personal list of items. Like uh, let me say, let me say apples, let me use uh, fruits, apples, and then uh, here let me use um, banana. And then uh, let me use uh, cherries, pulps. And then uh, let me use what? Let me use uh, let me use dates also. And then uh, here let me pass note for labels. Let me say labels. Labels. Let me assign it to the labels property. 
uh, to to labels variables <laughs> labels so let me try to run and see if it will work out yeah guys you can see it does we have labeled our 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 plots our graphs uh, so this of course by default it is it, it originates from this x-axis and then a counterclockwise but of course you can change the angle of which it begins like uh, uh i say that uh, by default is it, it, it uh, by default uh, angle is at the x-axis but you can change the start angle by specifying the start angle parameter so the start angle parameter is defined with a with an with an angle in decrease by default it is zero so in that case it just specify let me just change here um uh, just uh, first of all separate with the comma then uh, let me say start angle you specify your angle your starting angle like if it's 90 it will begin from 90 then uh, counterclockwise remember so it goes in this format in this and uh, the other side uh, so guys uh, let me talk about the explode parameter so guys uh, basically may, you might want one of the wedges to stand out like if you want to extract this apple uh, to this uh, pie chart and uh, to make it at least stand out so you have to use the explored parameter which allows you to do that now explored parameter if specified and are not none must be an array with, uh, with one value for each uh, wage so each uh, value represents how far from the sender um, the wage is to be displayed like let me just add in another parameter here guys let me say uh, explored you can use another variable name then uh, uh it should be explored or uh, x somewhere here yeah. you can use any, any other name then uh, you have to pass in um so by uh, the first one let me extract to 0 0.2 then at the rest let the way it let it, let it remain intact zero zero they are fighting now in that case i have to pass in what another parameter here called x load i'm gonna assign it to explode variable and then now uh, um this app will be extracted somehow let me try to run and see and then i guess you can see now we have extracted this uh you know this uh apple and uh, it is now at a separate wage so yeah basically is that's how you can do that of course you can also add the uh the shadow so the shadow to add the shadow can just say shadow shadow it, it takes two arguments the two booleans that is true and false if you want to have a shadow use the true if not use the false so shadow then if you want, you want it to use the true value it should be a boolean a true a boolean begins with capital t true then um it will have what it will have the shadow you can see we have the shadows i don't know if you can see well but uh it has the shadows of course you can change the colors as well you can specify the colors for each um for each uh you know item but um in case you don't want to go into that however you can just do this you can just create a variable for colors and then assign colors for each item remember it must be equal if it's four item it must be four items as well then you can pass the color variables here just colors and then you pass in the variables and then uh, each item will have a uh, unique colors so if you want to have uh, the legends or uh, something like uh, 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 something like here like uh, a graph something like uh, the labels to to the to describe your your items you have to use the legend the legend then you assign it to uh, which should be a legend function right it's a function uh, so it should be first of all plt plt dot legend then uh, here uh, you when you run you'll have uh, you see you have this uh, kind of description that uh, this one is apple banana cherry and so forth so okay so basically that's how you can add the legend and so um i think uh, you have uh, you've understood uh, so this is the end of the matplotlib full course and uh, i really appreciate you very much for your time Guess uh, if you have followed everything and you have understood everything, then I uh, guess I assure you that uh, your data visualization uh, skill has improved a lot, a lot, and I guess I encourage you to share it to your friends so that they too may also uh, learn something new. So, but I guess uh, ensure that you have subscribed, you've liked the video, and um, 
also share it to your friends and then next time guys this is Nehemiah and i'll see you on machine learning or uh, i'll provide the r course first of all then i'll provide the machine learning full course so guys i thank you so much and i'll see you then